Hey, anyway, anyway. Benicio del Toro. Yes. It's time to talk Lucha again. Yes. It's time to once again talk about Lucha Underground, but this probably won't be the most happy and upbeat discussion of all time. Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, Because, um, yeah, there's, there's not great news right now. For, for the world of Lucha Underground. That is sad to hear. Yeah. Um, the one good thing... Well, first off, for those of you who are, un, who are uninitiated out there, Lucha Underground is the future of professional wrestling. It's wrestling's next evolution, and it's the love of my life. And if you don't like Lucha Underground, or if you haven't seen Lucha Underground, then I'm serious right now. Get out of the podcast. <laughs> stop listening right now because you're pissing me off well i think i think it also makes them a nazi racist too yeah it's on netflix you know. for christ's sake stop watching i don't know the great american cooking show the great the british bake-off or whatever the hell that show is mm-hmm. and watch some lucha underground yeah so as of the taping of this podcast there are only six more episodes left in Lucha Underground Season 3. There are only six episodes left. Yes. And yet, the show has not yet announced any plans for a Season 4. In oh. fact, the, there, there were reports out yesterday that says that the possibility of Season 4... The possibility of a Season 4 is very, very slim. Um... I am understandably anxious about this. The show has gotten pretty detailed as it heads into uh, L- Ultima Lucha Thrace. Yeah. There's a lot of things going down without any, without uh, giving away any spoilers. One character is slowly turning into a murderous god. Nice. For realsies. Uh, and only, only a very, very bad guy has the power to defeat him. So the only person that can defeat this murderous god is is one of the evilest characters in Lucha Underground. But why would this evil character like fight for good anyway? Right. Um, they had a tournament. They called it the Quato Cup, and that was freaking amazing. Um, <laughs> it was really really good. I like the Quato look, 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 look. Cup. I, I I like I like Dario Quato. I like him a lot, but I don't think I want his cup. You know yeah, what I mean? That's a good point. Just... <laughs> yeah. um, Vampiro might be secretly leading someone to the dark side. Yeah. We recently met Katrina's mom a few episodes ago. Okay. She was odd. Then there's the strange story of the one wrestler who uh, has been around since day one who is secretly an undercover cop. Yes. So, well, that, so well that's, that's still going on? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Big time. He uh, yes, definitely. Because they started that. Well, well, this is the third season, right? So I'm on season yeah. two, right? Yeah. They've always yeah that 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 hasn't been panning out for me so far. So hopefully in season three. Oh yeah, no. There's a lot. There's a, a lot that happens in season three, and when it, it, as as far as that cop is concerned, and. His his partner is like that cop wrestler. Uh, the, his partner is that uh, creepy porn star wrestler with the porn stash. Well, I'm saying he's a cop. Yes. The guy with yes. the porn stash is a cop, too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he is creepy as fucking shit. Yes, he is. Uh, so there's a lot of plot, there's a lot of plot in this, and it's really upsetting to know that this might be it. So there are some issues. Um, season one cost a massive amount of money to make, and so when they were trying to, to get more, uh, episodes, more seasons made, a, uh, a, a bunch of producers got together and said, we will fund season two and season three if... It, because if we do that, then we'll get to 100 episodes, and that could mean syndication. Right. So actually, um, yeah, uh, next week's episode is the 100th episode. 
So technically, there's a possibility that they could get Lucha Underground syndicated. They'll have to bleep a lot. Yes, they would. But beyond that, I think it is a possibility. I mean, I could see Lucha Underground on, I don't know, the This Network or something like that. USA is always desperate for stuff. <laughs> but, well, they, but the... But the people, I would think, I, I would think though, well, they would pick it up for syndication. But like, I th- think if USA was interested, they'd make a bid on the show itself and just keep it going. Yeah, that's a possibility. There were, but the the second and third season were, you know, money was put into the second and third season it, with the understanding that they certain targets would be met, and those targets haven't been met. Uh, yeah. then also problems with the signing of wrestlers. We talked about this the last time we talked about Lucha Underground, right? But uh, Lucha Underground signed a deal with AAA Wrestling in Mexico. They're basically the WWE of Mexico, but when it comes to treating their wrestlers, they're basically the WCW of Mexico. And some of the wrestlers he, he just hate AAA Wrestling for this. So uh, Conan left AAA Wrestling and started his own wrestling faction called Clash Wrestling in Mexico City. Yeah, and a lot of wrestlers from AAA Wrestling left to go wrestle with Conan. So that's why Conan is only in season one of Lucha Underground. But anyway, uh, uh, so now a lot of their biggest wrestlers like uh, Pentagon Junior slash Pentagon Dark and phoenix and uh i think tejano but i'm not sure i believe cage yeah a bunch of their biggest names oh have cage can wrestled. go I, I i never liked cage oh yeah no he he has a lot to do in season three yeah yeah but oh, oh you you were naming the ones who were left no, no, those are those are the those are the wrestlers who have left AAA wrestling to go be with Conan. Oh yeah. So so now if they do season 4, there's a bunch of their biggest names that they might not be able to sign because they've left AAA wrestling. Yeah. So if Lucha under so and even uh, AAA wrestling has said, hey, if we do a season four, just to let you know, uh, you can go ahead and individually sign these wrestlers. That's fine. If you want to sign these Mexican wrestlers on your own to be in season four, that's cool. Just make sure there's a part in the contract that says they're no longer allowed to work with Conan. So that it becomes this big yeah. massive issue. Uh, there's also some sad news about their biggest female wrestler, Sexy Star. Did you hear about this? No. I mean, Rolling Stone talked about this. So really? you know that it's some big news. When, like, Rolling Stone and ESPN are talking about Sexy Star, you know <laughs> that some big shit went down. So Sexy Star is this female wrestler, and she's a big name, and um, she's she 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 fights the the male wrestlers, and she's uh, an amazing wrestler. Yeah. Anyway, AAA Wrestling just had basically their WrestleMania recently, and there was a match between Sexy Star and another woman, and they had this big heated rivalry, which is apparently also an actual rivalry, and these two women really do have animosity between each other. So unscripted not a part of the wrestling show at all whatsoever their wrestling match turned into a shoot which is what uh, they call it when the match when a, a you know a scripted wrestling match turns into a real fight yeah. and sexy star broke the shit out of the other woman's arm Ooh. on purpose because sexy star hated her Ooh, that's psychotic yeah, and now, now there's there's all these people who want to boycott Sexy Star, and people are pissed off, and some people are saying that she should never be allowed to wrestle again. She won the women's title at that match, and now she's been stripped of the women's title, and her future is in doubt, which is weird, because then you watch these old, you know, the brand new episode of Lucha Underground, which was taped like a year ago, 
And it's, yes, sexy star coming into the ring, this beautiful, brave woman who's been through so much. Yes. And it's like, ooh, that's got to feel weird for the the people of Lucha Underground. Yeah. Make the got to be weird for them. So, yeah, it's not looking great for Lucha Underground. But, you know, there's a possibility that they could turn it around, a slight possibility. I have been seeing ads in comic books for yeah. Lucha Underground, and uh, they play commercials during Raw and Junk. Walmart.com now sells Lucha Underground shirts for eight bucks. What so is... If you want, so if you want a Lucha Underground logo shirt or a shirt of Prince Puma or um, or um, uh, Mila Muertes... Walmart.com, eight dollars. You know, that's yeah. that's pretty amazing. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. The press has always been good for Lucha Underground. Also, again, next week is the one hundredth episode of Lucha Underground. Technically it could be syndicated now. Right. They'd have to end out a lot of they'd have to bleep a lot. And it, they might have to go black and white during some of the really bloody matches like Vampiro during the first Ultima Lucha. But anyway, yeah. There are ways that they could turn things around. It is possible. There is hope. It's just probably not likely. Yeah. What so is steps. what is Robert Rodriguez doing, and and how is El Ray as a whole? El Ray, if I'm not mistaken, El Ray survives as a network because they get a small amount of funding from the U.S. government. Okay, because the U.S. government was was looking for TV stations, uh, cable networks and stations that could appeal to uh, Latin uh, watchers to uh, a, a Latin American audience. And then Robert Rodriguez came up and said, I well, I've got an idea for a network. And that was the, his idea for the El Rey network, yeah. which was specifically targeted for a, a Mexican American demographic. So yeah. I believe that the funding for the network in and of itself, you know, a, 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 at least some of it comes from the United States government, which is weird. Yeah. But it, and if you have Cox cable, yeah. Then if you have Cox, then you have the El Rey network hiding somewhere. But I don't know a lot of people that have the El Rey network. It's not a major network. Yeah, and either it's not a Roku channel or it's a subscription Roku channel. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know, that's that is the next step of bilking us out of money. Yeah. Making yep. us buy a channel at a time. Yep. And idiots have been screaming about it. When I was working, that was my job. I, you know, I was the tech support cable guy. You know, um, screaming like we should be able to pick just the channels that we want. We want to. Okay, if you want to pay ten bucks a channel. Yeah. Because you don't like the, some of the channels in the package, hey, be my guest, and that's exactly where we're going. You know, yeah, because because yeah. you kind of need, you know, like you and I, we we both have to settle for things like ketchup, you know, yeah, yeah. But to but to really have like streaming, you know, then you got to like go Netflix and Hulu and Amazon, a few others. You know, yeah, that's fucking expensive, man. You, yes, it is. You're up to like sixty bucks already. You know, yeah, yeah. Recording the podcast. There, I. We are now live. <laughs> okay. Yes. yes. Hi, man. Oh. So hi. that that is that is my stand there. That is my little channel rant. I always liked the idea of buying different cable networks and all that sort of thing, but yeah, no, that's going to cost an arm and a leg. Yeah. 